Yeah, yeah, I know I'm late to the party, but let's just get this over with. So, what makes a good horror game? Is it the story, keeping as much information hidden from the player and making them piece the puzzle? Is it the tension-filling aspect of fighting the unknown and finding out what horrors hide beneath them? Or is it the sound design for which you start second-guessing if the little footsteps you heard were not always yours? It is all of those aspects together in unison. So, it pains me to say that the Callisto Protocol is probably one of the most disappointing games of 2022. It failed to deliver on the house of horrors that was promised by Glenn Schofield back in 2020. CEO of Striking Distance Studios, Glenn Schofield. Hey, Glenn. Hey, thanks, Jeff. Our goal is to make the single most scariest game for PC and consoles. Are you sure about that? We'll get back to that soon, Glenn. Real soon. But before we talk about why the game isn't scary, let's talk about Callisto Protocol's story and why it's actually really intriguing, until it isn't. So, the Callisto Protocol story opens up with our protagonist, Jacob Lee, played by Josh Duhamel. Ah, my ladies! Transporting a mystery cargo to Jupiter's moon, Callisto, with his friend, Max Barrow. Oh. Yeah, he doesn't last a prologue. Before they are interrupted by a small welcoming party led by Danny Nakamura, aka sweet darling Karen Fukuhara of the boys' fame. Hi everyone! Hi everyone! <laughs> Isn't she lovely? As our boy Jacob is trying to escape, Danny Nakamura shoots the window, creating a huge vacuum which causes their ship to crash land on the frozen tundra that is Callisto. As we previously mentioned, our friend Max Barrow is left for dead. But thankfully we're saved and get greeted by Captain Ferris, played by Sam Witwer of the Force Unleashed and Star Wars The Clone Wars series fame. Unfortunately, the love doesn't last long as you and Danny Nakamura are taken away unwillingly by Captain Ferris on account of Duncan Cole, the warden, to Callisto's Black Iron Prison. Fun little fact about the name Jacob, it comes from the Bible's book of Genesis, where he is the son of Isaac. Hmm. Coincidence? Back on our way to the prison, we have to go through a very grueling process of, uh, initiation. Fuck you! Mm. Afterwards, we're cast into the prison where we look at a small mysterious pink cube that took me a long time to actually find. And we wake up to find that the prison is kind of going through a little bit of renovation, you know, and is being overrun by the biophage. Your objective is then to escape the prison with a little help of your best buddy, Elias. Exactly. Let's get the fuck out then. Yeah. That's our first stop. Meet me there. How? Elevators that way, take it up to the next level. I'll be in touch. I gotta say, I really like the idea of being in a huge maximum security prison and trying to escape the unknown horrors of this planet, whilst understanding what or who is behind this mess. I would have enjoyed the game a lot more if it didn't fumble its story by a big exposition dump at the end, throwing away all the intrigue it had built up and tried to copy-paste the ending of the original game from 14 years ago. So let's talk about that game, shall we? When Dead Space came out, it really changed the survival horror genre, and the reason the game was so well received is that they took inspiration from arguably the best survival horror game of all time. Resident Evil 4 uh, is one of my favorite games of all time. One of the things I would say to the team is uh, we're going to make Resident Evil in space. And I just like the mood. The mood was oppressive sometimes. It was dreadful. I was always worried about what was around the corner, but I always wanted to see what was around the corner too. Resident Evil 4 was probably one of the places where we got the most, I guess, inspiration. As Glenn himself said, they tried to make Resident Evil 4 in space. 
and they straight up nailed it from the lighting. Hazardous anomaly detected. Quarantine activated. To the atmosphere. Make us whole again. To the sound design. This was their critical darling, which was nominated and won multiple awards, including a BAFTA one. To say that this game was a success would be an understatement. So why is it we went from this? To this. Oh fuck, this guy knocked my ass. Oh my god. Alright, come here, buddy. Whoa there. Relaxo. Fatso. Oh, he was very close. There we go, I dodged him. Oh, oh no, come on. Just die. Oh my god, how are you You are defying so many logs right now. I need to stop you in the name of all of them. Jesus. You know. That took me a total of 40 seconds to kill that guy. 40 seconds. That's basically the whole game. And we finally come full circle to why the Callisto Protocol isn't scary. And it comes down to one core feature. The gameplay. So let's talk about that, shall we? The gameplay boils down to two things. One is your melee-centered combat, where you hit enemies with a large baton, taking turns swinging at them, and vice versa. The combat reminds me a bit of Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, where you bob and weave left and right and wait for the enemy to finish his attack before you can start your combo. However, it's not as interesting, because it really takes no skill, as you do not need to watch out for the enemy's attack patterns, as even if they swing right, you don't have to go left. You just have to... Do only one direction first, either left or right is your starting one, and then proceed with the opposite direction of the one you started with. And that is like 90% of the combat, no joke. Here's a little drawing just to visualize what the combat actually looks like. Okay, I'm going to leave this on the screen for a bit for you guys to just memorize. There is a perfect dodge system in the game, but it's unnecessary due to the fact that you're not really encouraged to do it as it doesn't cause anything more than just to slow down on the dodge itself. It doesn't give you any special properties. The other part of the game is your standard shooting, which would be really fun if not for the fact that enemies are so tanky that you might as well be fighting the final form of SpongeBob. What is that? The weapons in the game are all the same with the exception of two. You have five variations of guns, starting from the hand cannon, revolver type gun, then the skunk gun, a mini quad barrel shotgun, then tactical pistol, a higher fire rate pistol, assault rifle, self-explanatory, and riot gun, a pump action shotgun. And you know, I would expect something more that is set in the year 2320? Really? This game makes Star Wars look like it's set in the year 4640. But it's Granted, the weapons do start feeling different once you upgrade them. But the issue is that you don't get to see even half of your weapon's fully upgraded modes, due to upgrades costing a fortune. Like damn man, 3000 for the final upgrade of a weapon? And I get only 14 to 50 credits per enemy? This really makes me feel like living in one of the poorest countries in Europe. Oh. Well. At the very least, they could have had a new game plus option, so you could just start a new campaign and buy the upgrades then. But you don't even have that. Dead Space had that at launch. Quick update on the New Game Plus issue, it seems like it was added a few days ago, so that's pretty cool. Apparently there's also like a bug fix for the hardest achievement as well. Moving on to another point of argument, Callisto has barely any exploration to speak of, you know, and most of the optional paths can be missed due to the certain you cannot go back moments where your character drops down a terrain and the game instantly saves after that. At least in Dead Space, everything was interconnected by doors and you also had like a little marker to show you what your true objective is, so you know where to go if you wanted to explore. The weapons in Death Space also felt very different and fit the futuristic setting of sci-fi. We had the old plasma cutter. The pulse rifle. The line gun. The flamethrower. 
the Ripper. I think it's time for Jack to let her rip. The contact beam. And the force gun. The weapons themselves felt chunkier and beefier, able to both withstand the horde of necromorphs and also destroy it. It really felt like you had the right tool for every situation and you had to like figure out which tool fits the proper scenario. Another critical point to the Callisto Protocol's uh, lack of stuff is the enemy variety. Uh, it doesn't really have any enemies to speak of. There's like free enemy types in total. You've got like these quick time event enemies that just latch onto you and you have to press a button. You have Big Mouth, which is like an acid spitting enemy, but the moment you go like close to him, he'll start like attacking like any normal enemy. Uh, you have these corruptors, which are like invisible enemies, but you only see them like in one section of the whole game, which are kind of cool. Uh, the blind as well, who they cannot see, they can only hear you, except when they don't. Bye, have a great time. And this just brings me to the point that this space had a lot of variety when it came to its enemies. You had the slashers, the lurkers, the infectors, the swarmers, the brutes, the pregnants, the leaper, the exploder, the divider, the twitcher, and so many more including free boss types as opposed to Callisto where you have one boss that you fight not once, not twice, not three but four times throughout the whole campaign, it gets grating, I tell you. And while Dead Space might not have had the most original bosses, they're almost like similar to each other, at least it had like air vacuum sections, zero G segments, and like little junction boss puzzles, even though not all of those things are great, they added a bit to the gameplay. To its credit, Callisto does have some really nice looking environments. And a really cool addition to the gameplay is the grip, which is basically the telekinesis from Dead Space, but now you can actually grab whole enemies and throw them into environmental hazards. Pretty cool stuff. Just wanted to add that I find it funny that in the official launch trailer for the game, they tried to present healing as something capable during combat. When in reality, it's so slow, you might as well be signing a death sentence. Man, I just gotta say that the last boss is really disappointing, to the point where I just got soft-locked. <laughs> like, I couldn't really beat the boss because it didn't have enough ammunition to go through with it. And you can't really melee him, the only way is to actually shoot him. So I had to restart from my checkpoint and then get as much ammunition as I could and go back and fight him again. Overall, the game's combat falls apart the moment more than one enemy is introduced into the fray, where enemies start attacking you from side to side. You're almost like a pinball between them. Uh, the story of the game itself just isn't really good because it starts off interesting with the whole like you being trapped in a prison and trying to realize what's happening. But then later on, one character just blatantly, you know, explains everything to you and what's happened and all that intrigue is lost because you don't even get to go through all that you don't even get to understand more of that there are some audio logs here and there which do something like that but at the same time the audio logs you cannot actually listen to as you're walking on like that space and that makes it even like less appealing for me to like listen to them I wish Glenn and his team all the best of luck in improving the game and making a wonderful universe because there is room to expand and I hope they fix the gameplay so it's not as frustrating. I don't know how they'll do it, but we'll see. And I uh, just wanted to say that I don't really hate the game. I mean, I actually got the Platinum Trophy, as you'll see on screen. Uh, at the same time, I also got the Platinum Trophy for Dead Space because I played all of that on PlayStation and all the footage you see is from PlayStation. And shockingly, it still looks really good. I do hope that Glenn Schofield has completely removed Crunch as an idea from his studio because he did put on that controversial tweet some time ago and he deleted it. However, I did do some digging and I found some really bad reviews for like Sledgehammer Games, which he was the director for. That was his previous studio. And uh, I don't know if I should trust him or not, but Crunch was one of the main issues. So I really hope that he has stepped forward and made some new changes to his studio. Hi, thank you to everybody who actually like sit, sat through my rambling till the end. Um, I might actually make a video on the upcoming Dead Space remake because I am looking forward to it and I will definitely be playing it. Uh, everybody who is on that team saying a lot of positive things, which is great. So I hope that it turns out good and it's not a disappointment kind of like the Callisto is. Uh, as we said, 
Callista has been going through some updates, so thankfully we will probably get better as the time goes on. So yeah, peace and uh, hope you all have a nice week.